I am northwest of Green Bay on a main street between a river and a lake. This is Shawano. We are in Shawano County. We're on a bridge that's on the channel. The channel is between the Wolf River and uh, Shawano Lake. Hey John. hey, John, how are you? Pretty good. So you've been studying Shawano? Uh huh. Okay, so what tribe was here first? Menominee. Okay. Without any question. Uh, they were the major tribe in northeastern Wisconsin for centuries, uh, but year by year, their land got whittled down to a reservation just north of Shawano. Uh, Shawano, in fact, is said to mean south because every fall the tribe would come south to Shawano Lake to harvest wild rice. Mm. So the wild rice is long gone, but the Menominee are still just up the road. So how did the city of Shawano start? I think of Shawano, John, as a river town that became a lake city. This is the channel, as you said, between the river and the lake. The Wolf River was the lifeline in those early years. Uh, north of here, up in the Menominee land, it's, it's just wild. It's yeah. full of uh, waterfalls and rapids make it great for whitewater rafting. Here, it's wider and slower it was used for transporting just whole forests of white pine logs that were cut north of here. And a lot of those were cut on Shawano Lake and mm. drifted down, floated down the channel here. And a lot of them ended up in Oshkosh, which was so full of sawmills, it was called Sawdust City. I remember uh, that. <laughs> remember that from yeah, a couple of years ago? I do. Uh, but the first sawmill in this area was built right on this island back in 1844. Wow. And the mill pond is right here, the, the dam was right about here. So they saw the logs here as well, but the main business was supplying all those logging camps farther north. So that's what put Shawano on the map. And uh, how did Shawano become a lake city? Uh, by the 1800s, late 1800s, the, the pine were pretty much playing out and it needed a new economic base. So here you have trains are arriving here by then, the first back in 1884. So on the edge of town, you've got Shawano Lake, this lake that covers 10 square miles. So pretty soon it became a destination for vacationers. Yeah. The first resort goes back to 1889, and they served what they call summer boarders. Hmm. By the early 1900s, you had excursion boats making the rounds of the lake every single day in summer. And downtown merchants would commute to their stores by boat from lake houses. That's cool. Huh? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else was going on in the area? Farming, absolutely. Farming. Uh, the area around Menominee Reservation was still very heavily wooded. Shawano County became farmland after the pine were gone. A lot of Germans settled in the area and a lot of them became dairy farmers. I found a couple of cool numbers doing my research. Sometimes you just sort of trip on things. Back in 1874, there were 100 logging camps on the Wolf River and its tributaries. By 1925, 50 years later, the camps are gone and Shawano County has 50 cheese factories. <laughs> so you really see the transition. They began by serving loggers and then served the farmers who replaced all those loggers. Mm. Became a trading center for the surrounding area. A lot of those Germans subscribed to a uh, Shawano weekly newspaper called the Volkenblatt. Volkenblatt? Yep. Yeah. Know what that means? I have no idea. It means weekly newspaper. Well, that's, <laughs> that makes sense, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> what about Shawano today? A lot of things, John. Uh, still a resort town, uh, still a trading center for the rural area around it, still a gateway to the Menominee Reservation, mm -hmm. uh, also an industrial center. Some big employers here, including a paper mill just around the bend here that goes back to 1894. A population? About 9,000, and they reflect the area's history. Nearly half are German by ancestry, and about 15% are Menominee. Mm. Location? Uh, Shawano is between Shawano Lake mm -hmm. and the Wolf River, about 40 miles northwest of Green Bay. And uh, good biking? Yeah, the Mountain Bay Trail runs right through town. Mountain so, Bay? Yep, I haven't Mount seen Point. the mountain yet, but I, 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 I hope to soon. Thanks, John. See you, John. We're in downtown Shawano. I love the fact that they pay homage to their history. Like on this corner, look, it's the Lumberjacks who really began this community. And right across the street, let me show you what they pay homage to. The German farmer walking his cow. To be honest, I'd rather have this job. This is a straw for a Holstein. This will be uh, filled with semen and this will turn into a calf. Gen X, let's first talk about what Gen X is. So we are a artificial insemination company for cattle. We sell semen, we sell products all over the US, all over the world. 
What I'm doing is looking at morphology. We actually sell our product to 65 countries around the world. This is the worldwide headquarters. Of, of Genex? Yes, it is. In Shawano, Wisconsin? Shawano, Wisconsin. How great is that? Who would have thought? <laughs> right. And it's filling them up right now and They're closing them up? up? They're filling them up and sealing them. We started about 1940. It was started by the extension program in the state of Wisconsin. Three counties came together and decided they needed a better way of breeding cattle. It takes about one and a half straws to have a cow conceive. We have seven million units of semen stored here in distribution center. This is a typical storage tank. So we are a cooperative, so we are owned by our farmer members. So we have about 11,000 members and customers in the U.S. Why do you need to do what you guys do? Why can't it just be done naturally? Number one would be safety. Um, those bulls are big, strong, and uh, and they have been known to, to hurt people. Next would be the disease factor. The other thing, the genetic factor, they're genomically tested and they have very high genetics. You can just feel very safe with our bulls. So safety comes both ways because yeah. you're using a good genetic product and you're safe not having a bull on the farm. How many of these ship out a day? We probably ship about 25 to 30 tanks a day, smaller tanks. How many people work in here? In this section here, I have, I think, 16 people that work here. In Shawano, how many employees? 80 to 100 in Shawano. That's great. And about 400 throughout the U.S. It's amazing. We're at Menominee Tribal Enterprises. Let's talk about what this enterprise does. So the enterprise itself is the arm of the tribe that handles the forestry management and, the, and operates the mill as well. Our forest management practices are world renowned. As you're looking at sustainability, we take the dead and dying trees and leave the best timber standing. This is what we call a kiln. Some okay. hardwoods is like Red Oak, we said 28 days it takes to pull the moisture out. We're preparing to put a package together for the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo, nice. and hopefully all those floors will be our wood. Last year we sold, just in basketball courts alone, almost one and a half million board feet. We ran out. We're a sustainable forest. Yeah. Whatever we get from the, our forestry department, that's all we can harvest, and when we're done, you can go on a waiting list or you can go find it someplace else. Menominee kind of represents that middle ground between do nothing and total abuse towards a forest resource. They're in the middle huh. and they've shown society how to do that. Most people don't realize that the Menominee Forest is the oldest managed track of land in the United States. Is that the truth? The gross acreage is 234,000 acres. The forest is 220,000 acres, so 95% is forested. Wow. Right here, we have about 770 feet of beach. The beauty that we have here is we got a fabulous story to tell. Yeah. This is a old, sustainable forest. Yeah. One of the best in the world. People around the world come here to get tours of it. We're standing in a mill yard that's been here 130 years. Mm. So the mill produces lumber. We also have a millworks division where we do cabinets, molding, things like that. And then some of the pulp wood and, and bolts get sold to the paper mills and things like that as well. A lot of it in this department, you're seeing stuff end up, end up as cabinets, kitchen cabinets, vanities, stuff like that. The cabinets over here are for Crossroads Community Church in New Berlin. So. Okay. So when they're watching the Milwaukee Bucks playing on that floor at the Pfizer Forum, that's our floor. Yeah. What year was this building built? 1914, 1915. 1914, 1915. We are at what will soon be Stubborn Brothers Brewery. And I believe that I was in this theater when I was a kid. That's right. So we're at the downtown theater. That What, what did this theater used it's to be called? It used to be, be called? called the Crescent Theater. The Crescent Theater. Yeah. There was a balcony to this theater? Yeah, so actually it used to be box seating back in the day. So it was, it was sat vacant for three years. For mm -hmm. three years. Yeah, so it sat vacant. Uh, it was foreclosed upon. So as a result, we came here and we intended initially to just do this building. We were originally gonna brew down in the orchestra pit right there, uh -huh. but instead we built this giant building to our side. So that's where you'll be brewing. Yep, our tanks are over there right now, yeah. Do you have any idea how many this will seat? Yeah, this will seat about 100 people. This is where people will enjoy that. Yes. <laughs> and you own property next door as well. Yes, we're uh, building out our coolers. We own a building next door. That's where we're installing a full service farm to table kitchen. And then we also own the building next to it where we're going to be doing a bed and breakfast. And you run a farm. 
Yes, we run a 2,000 cow dairy farm. And these tin ceilings, how gorgeous are they? Oh yeah, they're original 1914, 1915. So the concept here is that you are the beginning, you're the middle and the end of all of it. That's the goal. Like there, there's not many people that you're gonna have to go to for, for anything. We know that we're gonna hold a high standard. So initially it'll be about, probably about 10 to 15 employees in here. The brewing area is just Eric and I and my wife Amanda. Oh nice. Uh, yep, who went to UC Davis School for uh, brewing. Most of our meat we will raise our and have USDA certified and processed. So, and instead of uh, theater, that'll be Stubborn Brothers. Yes. That'll be Stubborn Brothers Brewery. Yeah. 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 Aaron, you need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get for forty cents anymore? Come on. Sun drop. My dad was the first bottler in the state of Wisconsin to bottle Sundrop in around 1953, 54 for a guy in Oshkosh, Binder Beverage. We are at Twigs, and your dad started this? Yep, he started back in 1951. He was in the Korean War then, and he came home and started it right away. So this is a business that you've known your entire life. Yep, I've been in here all my life, and I've been working here since I was 12 years old. When I got out of Little League, I started working. <laughs> Black cherry, blue raspberry, green soda. Now these are specialty sodas. Rhubarb. What's rhubarb? It's kind of a combination of a rhubarb and a berries. And sour. This yeah. is really lemony. Like a carbonated lemonade. Right. This is That's delicious. It. How many days with twigs a week, and how many days with... It, it all depends on the order. So we use only granulated sugar. That which is different. Yeah, we don't Isn't use it? the corn syrup. We believe it tastes better. So you bottle it here? We bottle it here. We do it only in glass bottles. Okay. You have a great museum. Yep. It, you can learn a lot about soft drinks, about sugar, sweeteners, how glass bottles are made. But the big hit is the taste testing bar, where people can come to this and test all of our sodas and in this. It's all no charge. I'd like to try that butterscotch. The butterscotch, okay. Let's see the bottle. Is that the bottling plant? That is the original place that my dad started in 1951. Oh, nice. And it's still standing. And it's a destination spot, isn't it? Yeah, like it people, is. people come to town people, for this. Yeah, that's right. People actually, uh, they like to come and watch the bottling. What are you working on right now? So we're working on Sundrop this morning. Sundrop is the original gold citrus soda. That's our bread and butter. It's a good soda. Difference. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah, a good soda. I always say I was raised on Milwaukee's east side, closer to the river than to the lake on Bartlett. Well, we're in Shano on Bartlett, which is on the river, the Wolf River. I guess being on Bartlett and Shano is so different than Milwaukee because that's not a duplex. Nice, Bartlett. We're in a channel right now. Legend Lake is one big lake, but it's- Made it up of eight lakes, dredged together to then create just Legend Lake. We're on the Menominee Res Indian Reservation. We are. So probably about 80% of it is non-native owned. Okay. And then there's probably 20% of the properties on the lake are still native owned. It's 1,300 all, acres. 1,300 acres. Yep. They're all part of an association. Yeah, we're all part of the Legend Lake Association, Property Association. And do you know how many property owners there are in that? A million? Okay. Thousands. <laughs> are there thousands? There's quite a few. There are. Yeah there's, yeah, there's a lot of properties on the lake. When I take people out, I want to take them out on the boat to see the lake. It's lined with the tall pines, and there's eagles everywhere. Right. You know, loons everywhere. There's black bear. There's everything here. You know, we call Legend Lake hauntingly beautiful. Yeah. And there we have it. Well, it doesn't look. Look at this here. Yeah. yeah. And it's 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 a good kept secret. Oh. Well, <laughs> should we won't. shut up anymore? <laughs> Is that what we should do? Just be quiet. <laughs> Let's talk about Shawano County and its relationship to barn quilts and how it all began. I had seen barn quilts in a lot of other areas of Wisconsin, other states. So I came home one day uh, in June of 2010 and told my wife I thought I was going to try and get a barn quilt project started in Shawano County and talked to the chamber and I talked to other people, people where I thought a barn quilt would look nice and I got just amazing acceptance to it. We just finished up the 352nd barn quilt just in Shawano County. You had yeah. three the first year. We had three the first year. That's pretty amazing. 
It is amazing to me, and the people come from all over the place to come and see these crazy quilts. It's yeah. just, it's incredible. And we have bus tours in the spring and the fall specifically to come up here to see the quilts. It really is something to get to the top of the hill in the middle of the country and off, off in the distance is a barn quilt. They're really, they're magical is what they are. They are, and any yeah. time of the year. I mean, uh, they're just as pretty in the winter time. Oh, nice. We like to drive around, my wife and I, just to look at them in different seasons. I think we've been on just about every county road in, in Shawano County That's now. in your county? Yeah, and there's a map. I actually put together a book that has a picture and a description of, of every single quilt that we have in the county. Uh, and also in the Shawano Annual Visitor Guide, we put a map that shows the location and the, the address and location of every single one. So people can stop at the chamber, pick up a visitor guide, and drive around to their heart's content to look at whatever. As far as counties go, do you have the largest amount of barn quilts? Yes, we have more <gasps> eight foot by eight foot barn quilts on barns in Shawano County than any county in the United States. People are proud of these things in this county. Every single one has its own little story. We're in Sturgeon Park here in Shawano, and I wish it was the uh, middle of April through the 1st of May. Why? Because that's spawning season. They come up the river to spawn, and the water is just full, teeming with sturgeons. The legend has it, it is so thick with sturgeons that you could walk across the river. I wish I was here to see that. There's one, two. Four. This is Turtle Joe. Turtle Joe. And how did you get that name? I caught a turtle one time when we were bullhead fishing, and it was delicious. And so right there, we got hooked on turtle soup. This is my hatchery. I just finally woke up, and I guess now, nah, yeah. How many eggs do you think there is in everything you got here? There came a point in time when it was time to give back. I don't right? do it anymore. Yeah. 4,056 eggs in there. No, there aren't. Yes, there is. You better get out here when it's time to hatch, because they're coming out by the hundreds. You got them little heads crawling sometimes. Three, four of them come out of the same hole and they're climbing over one another. The turtles lay their eggs where and when, and what do you do then? Well, they'll lay them uh, late May and usually May, June, and July. When I get them eggs, I bring them home and I bury them because they're threatened and they're losing the habitat like everything else. Yeah. And uh, helping nature out, it needs all the help we can get. We've got 11 species of turtles in Wisconsin. We do. 11 different species. There's painted turtles in here. And the rest are snapping turtles? And is there a typical number that she'll lay? A painted turtle like we've got here in Mud Turtle, I'd say between eight and 11 eggs. Snapping turtle, 35, 40. I had one last, last year. year, I had over 100 eggs on her. It's three months that they have to be buried? It Usually. takes about three months from that, 90 days, something like that, 85, yeah. 90 days, in that range. Uh, but the sad part about this is that most of these, once they hatch and we release they them, still got the predators. they won't survive. They won't. Because there are so many predators. So has anybody come I up don't here? Keep, I can't, I don't, I don't sell them, I don't do nothing. I'm not getting paid for right. this. I don't, I don't care about that. That's just right. a hobby, more or less. Yeah. We're, we're putting back what we took off. That's nice. Plus, maybe somebody will give them a helping hand. Everything needs it, especially these guys too. So Mike, we're in Shano. We're talking about the Shano Hawks today. We are. And uh, track and field. Track and field. Great. And really excited to talk about it. Dave Hansen, who's their coach, 35 years the head track and field coach at Watertown High School. Two at Oconomowoc, three here. 41 years of doing this. Recently retired. Oh. Whoever takes over has taken over a way better program. He talks to these kids. Track and field does not have to be your number one sport. Not even your top two. But if you join track field, we'll make you better athletes. The other thing, John, that he did that I think is really cool, when he got here, they didn't have records for track and field in the school. They didn't know who was the top 10 in yeah. any of this. And he reached out to the community and said, look, I want to have this. So the, I, my kids can look at the top 10 in the history of the school That's cool. and try to be on that yeah. board. They have to have something as a goal to go after. And how many of those kids, I've heard them during the seasons go, my goal was to get on to the top 10. My goal is this. And if they're making the top 10, they're also helping the school district or our track team by placing higher in the conference and then for also sectionals. You bet. How many kids in the school? 900 kids. And how many kids involved? Around 50 in the whole program, nice. but it's growing. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, John. It's a gorgeous morning in Shawano, Wisconsin. We haven't begun work yet. Um, and I wondered where to get a really good Pershing. I found one. Fanitas. I am standing in front of a very popular place in town called the Stock Market. And it's run by two sisters. And guess what their last name is? No, not market. Stock. 
I'm in front of Dryer's Pharmacy on Main Street. There has been a pharmacy here since 1884. The Dryer's came here in 1967. I call this a small box store because there's everything in there. There's the pharmacy, there's women's fashions. There's a koi pond in here. It's cool. I'm still on Main Street, now it's lunchtime, so I thought I'd have a hot dog at j Dogs. And thank the Lord it's between May and October, because in October, they pick that thing up and move it out, yeah. We're at U.S. Air Motorsports. Raceway, yeah. Raceway. This is and your track. Uh, and it's a very exciting place. Yeah. Um, it's on 39 acres and the track length is 1.1 miles. We have all different venues here, drift cars, motorcycles, go-karts, autocross, and we have legend cars. What's drifting? Well, a good way to explain drifting is they take the car to the point of wrecking and do a controlled drive. So the car is at the limit that it can go before it's been... Speed-wise? Speed-wise is about 60, 65 miles an hour. That's interesting. People come from all over the country and from Japan, UK, um, Germany. They come to spectate and they come to participate. Can I see your license, please? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk tires on these things. Sam's car can take a brand new set of tires and in six laps, they're pretty much gone. <laughs> so. How long before you were that comfortable doing it? Like, I think we've been driving for about four years. For four years. Yep. In the first, like, six months? Pretty much a total disaster, yeah. Oh, Nothing like it? that, no. Yeah. This track is pretty high speed. Motorcycles are close to 100 miles an hour. The go-karts that race here, that's 100 miles an hour. The go-karts go 100 miles an hour? Those aren't the go-karts we know, are they? No, the rental carts that we have, um, we do bachelor parties, we do corporate parties. Those are 45 miles an hour. But it is fast when you're that low to the ground. Oh, sure. So it is, yeah. uh, it's exciting. Yeah, this is one of the top five tracks in the nation. We're at Torchlight, which is a fine dining establishment. It's a gorgeous room. I know, it's a beautiful place. How long have you been in this establishment? 39 years. 39 years. And what do people know it for? Great atmosphere, wonderful food. And this is New Zealand orange roughy stuffed with king crab. I feature a catch of the day every week. You do? It, it changes weekly. Friendliness, I hope. Yeah. Well, I know we have the biggest menu in the area yeah. and probably one of the biggest menus in the state. So it doesn't matter if you want chicken nuggets or if you're lobster or spaghetti, you cannot beat our Italian food. These are the appetizers? And everything is made from scratch. Your chef yeah. he does a great job. That's delicious. He does a great job. Uh, but every entree comes a soup and salad bar and all his soups are homemade. That is the heartbeat of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And he happens to be my son also. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, so he's bribed a lot. <laughs> So when we were on our way to Shano, I was reading our notes. So I was like, oh, a great, a great restaurant, a fine dining restaurant. Let's go in and see them. With a petting zoo. We have, yes. You have? Yeah. There's the Patagonian Katie. Is it your doing? Yeah. Then we have Humphrey. It's a fetish. I don't, but watch, you think she's so little? She is not so little. What? She's really not big, she's just all legs. Some of these are rescue. For instance, that little pony. They come from all over. We're USDA approved, so we are a, literally a licensed zoo and DNR also. So we have also a skunk and things like that. So everything here is tame, which is kind of fun because you go to zoos and you can see from a distance and go, right. there's a camel, but not here, or a kudamande, or kangaroo. And besides all of this, you have a really good restaurant. It's really something. Thanks, appreciate that. <laughs> This is your dealership? Yes, it is. Yeah, how long you been out here? Well, we moved here in 1998, but I started April 1st of 1979. We moved to a different location in Shano and outgrew that three times, adding more buildings on. Then in 97, we bought 72 acres out here on the highway, because it's far more than just Harleys. Yeah. This General Lee is one of the first two ever made. You know, we have museums here full of uh, 60s muscle cars and antique motorcycles. There's a woolly mammoth tusk back here that's eight foot seven inches long and weighs 88 pounds. Oh, I just love muscle cars and old motorcycles and strange things. This is a motorcycle I built here, uh, but on the exhaust pipe, I built an elaborate coffee pot. Here's my Harley Pogo stick made out of a Harley front fork and two Harley connecting rods. Let's get down to the restaurant next door. That's a fan I made, it's 40 feet long, it's all Harley parts. 
and I love to cook, so I brought the restaurant. So I brought all my homemade recipes next door as well. It's mainly a barbecue house. Out back is the smokehouse. I built my own rib cooking machine in there. It weighs 5,000 pounds. Hey, come here, buddy. And then we also have 128 animal zoo here with birds and snakes and tortoises and iguanas and alligators and buffaloes and camels and kangaroos. And what? Um, we have 10-foot alligators, and I jump in the pen every Saturday morning and feed them meat with the six-inch tongues. Aha! These are the stars of Jackass Flats over here. Uh, <laughs> it's a therapeutic donkey experience. Uh, that's a 5,000-pound granite boulder that I wrapped with iron and put trailer hitch balls on the outside. Just a fun thing for people, I don't know. I just enjoy, uh, it's got mechanicals in it. He blows flames out his mouth every 30 minutes. Doing fun things and building fun things and uh, challenging myself to do them. Yeah, this whole place is really a culmination of everything I love and enjoy. And, uh, but I share it all with the public and uh, yeah. we have fun with life and that's really what life's all about. Once in a while in the middle of a great season comes a place that's incredibly memorable, Shauna. This is the routine. You have 30 seconds to tell us why Shauna, Wisconsin is the best place in the world to live, work, and play. And Mayor Ed, you can start now. Spring, summer, winter, fall, it's all here. We're close to Milwaukee. We're close to Appleton, Green Bay, the whole populated area. Come on up. We've got stuff going on. Did I mention fishing? Mm -hmm. Fishing, great fishing here. The rivers, kayaking, snowmobiling, you name it. It's here for you to do great parks. We we'll want you to come and find your wild side. I hope you're going to eat these. I'm allergic to fish. No, I'm kidding. You're really not. I, I lied about that. <laughs> From Heritage Park in Shawano. Thank you, underwriters, for making this possible. Thanks. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Ernest C. and Florence M. Shockey Fund and by the David A. and Nancy E. Putz Fund. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation, inspiring philanthropy, serving donors, and strengthening communities now and for the future. Michaels Corporation, serving the energy, transportation, telecommunications, and utility industries. Michaels, constructing North America's infrastructure for our future. We Energy's Foundation and Wisconsin Public Service Foundation are proud to support public television. Together we create a brighter future for the communities we serve. ATC moves electricity from where it's generated to communities where it's needed. American Transmission Company, helping to keep the lights on, businesses running, and communities strong.